Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. How are you doing today? How's that winter solstice for you? Are we missing the sunlight yet? I know I am. Um, but despite that, and despite the fact that my body has been giving me quite the hard time lately, my mood is great. I may be lacking a bit of motivation, but I'm stable and happy and that's what matters. Yay me! <laughs> if you're new here, hi and welcome. My name is Sarah Labar and every once in a while I like to show up here and show you a craft that I've been working on. So if you're into art, um, sewing, fashion and everything vintage and history bounding, then keep on watching or better yet subscribe to this channel because I am here for you on Fridays. Last year, around that time of the year, I was in a big rush to finish my festive dress just in time for Christmas. I had chosen this pattern right here, Butterick 9969. I don't have an exact year, but I gather it's from the late 50s. It resulted in this festive dress that I'm wearing right now. I decided to make this into a yearly tradition. In January, when all the Christmas stuff goes on sale for half the price, I go out and buy a big bunch of fabric with a nice Christmas print on it, with the intention of making a dress for it for the next holidays. Last week, twas the season to do just that, while taking footage to make a nice video tutorial about it. The sewing pattern I chose for this year is also from Butterick. The number is 8058. And some quick googling let me know that this pattern is from the year 1957. Um, these are indeed classic cocktail dresses from the late 50s. I chose the one in the middle, view C, with a silhouette that's a bit reminiscent of the Dior new look that happened in the late 40s but was still very fashionable a decade later when this was printed. There were a few creative decisions to be made. I wasn't sure at first if I was gonna do sleeves. I ultimately decided against the sleeves because this dress was a bit more of a technical challenge than I anticipated at first. I also decided to make the skirt longer in order to have a gown that was almost floor length. It meant, sadly, however, that I had to forego the big poofy shape of the new look silhouette because you need a bell-shaped petticoat for that and my petticoat is an A-line petticoat which gives kind of a leaner silhouette. This doesn't bother me that much though because my Christmas print is quite busy this year. This is the fabric I chose for my dress. With a print this busy, honestly, there's a fine line between wearing a beautiful flowery gown and going out disguised as a bush. Not this kind of bush, that kind of bush. Although, well... Yeah, so the A-line petticoat is just gonna give me a little bit of flair in the skirt without making me look like a cupcake. You know, like those Regency court dresses? Ugh. <laughs> no thank you. <laughs> anyway, we're on December the 20th now, which means I've got just enough time to finish editing this tutorial and uploading it in time for Christmas. I've got no time to waste, so without further ado, let's get to the sewing. Okay, this is what we're working with today. This is my back panel. The darts have been basted already by hand. I always do my darts by hand. This is how I get them to be so precise. And the darts have been put in the front pieces as well. There is a piece for the back of the neck, as well as some pieces for the front. If you notice here, there's a bit of a uh, overlap here at the front so these pieces are gonna overlap and create a front closure when i make a dress usually i don't bother making a mock-up for the skirt i only mock up the bodice part of my dress and this is going to be the case today so the side seams are going to be brought together and the front bit here is going to be gathered between those two points I, I just don't know exactly what width i should gather it so um I might refer to my other pattern pieces for guidance. So I need to gather this bit and then bring it against this piece like so. So yeah, I'm navigating a bit in the dark right now. I don't exactly know what I'm doing. I might have to think about it for a bit before I uh, commit myself to this neckline. <laughs> Ok, 
Okay, we are on day two of my Christmas dress project. This is again Butterick 8058 from 1957. So on this side here, I unpicked this bit and tried to, you know, kind of play around with the shape to bring it much closer to my own body shape. I'm gathering much more of the fabric than what's written on the pattern initially, just so that I can smooth this over like this, over the side of the breast. Let's just imagine that these are very good looking gathers for a second. This would have to look something like that. See? Now, my armhole is way too small and that's even before I made it even smaller with my adjustment. So I'm gonna have to trim some of that arm's eye here. I decided against putting any sleeve that would have just complicated my job even further so no sleeve no thank you i'll instead there's a lot of blue jays right now outside it's very pretty <laughs> they're also very loud and kind of a big bunch of bullies too I mean, they're very pretty to look at, but blue jays are quite the unpleasant birds. I would even go so far as calling them a bunch of a-holes. It's too short. I have a long torso. I have long everythings, but especially my torso. When I tried it yesterday, the bodice was also a little too tight around the waist. I think I'm gonna let out these darts just a little bit, maybe by 3 sixteenths of an inch on either side of the seam line, which is gonna give me like three quarters of an inch of ease around the waist. Hi, voiceover Sarah here. So with these minor alterations, my pattern was ready to be cut into the Christmas fashion layer. The bodice back was cut on the fold. Same for the collar back, which I did twice. The front yoke was also cut twice on the double layer and also on the bias, which gave me four front bias yoke pieces. My skirt panels were too wide to be cut on the double layer, so I unfolded my fabric and cut two front panels and two back panels on the single layer. I made sure to add nine inches at the bottom of each panel. All those yoke and neck pieces had to be prepared. All are cut to have a fashion layer to be seen on the right side of the garment and a facing layer, one that's destined to rest against the skin. The facing layer had to be structurally augmented with some interfacing. Those commercial sewing patterns, even the vintage sewing patterns, would usually have us use fusible interfacing. Now, I don't care for it. Personally, I find it not durable at all. So non-fusible interfacing it'll be. I used a cotton and linen canvas, which I drew parallel lines along its grain line to pad stitch it to its corresponding facing. It works better if you base the pieces together at a couple places just to make sure everything is smooth. I trimmed the excess seam allowance on the canvas part only. I then attached them together to form one long piece which allowed me to fold inwards the outer fabric's seam allowances and baste them in place using temporary basting stitches. The yoke's seam allowances also get folded inwards and basted in place on the fashion layer, the outer layer of the garment, but just on one side for now. The first step in the construction is to do the main bodice. There's a dart on each front panel, and there are two darts on the back panel. If you want something really precise, I suggest you baste them by hand instead of just pinning them before doing them on the machine. For the side seams, you can do your seam of choice, but in any case, you need to finish your seams before you attach a bodice to a skirt. For this garment, I chose to do a French seam. If you don't know what a French seam is, check out the description box for a link to another sewing tutorial. I've trimmed all of my arm's eyes with some double folded bias tape here and here. I've marked my seam line here in the back as well as my center back and I've marked my center back on the yoke as well. This is the wrong side of the garment 
So now I need to bring those pieces together in the center back and whip stitch those two pieces together at that seam line. I'm in shock. I have no idea what happened here, but <laughs> my final bodice in no way resembles my numerous mock-ups. So I have no idea what happened here, but this does not fit at all. So I seam ripped most of it and I pinned it on the dress form to kind of play with it. And I think I'm gonna have to redo this piece here. Hi, it's voiceover Sarah again. So I had to redo my back neck yoke. I had to interface it with pad stitching and then trim its canvas seam allowances and then reattach it to the front yoke pieces, turn in and baste the remaining seam allowances in place and finally reattach the yoke to the back and to the center front. I draped the remaining fabric over the bust and gathered it on my dress form, but you can totally do those things on yourself if you're feeling up to it or have a friend help you. To assemble the skirt, I had to veer off the pattern's instructions for a minute. There are two front panels and two back panels. I sewed the two fronts together and the two backs together and finished my seam allowances by felling them by machine. You can totally do the finishing of your choice here, but the important is to do it now. The one thing one has to know about these vintage sewing patterns is that most of them don't come with pockets. So I dug up a huge pocket pattern from my history bonding stash and cut four pieces. These are extremely girthy, so that'll do. I pinned and sewed my pocket pieces to the sides of my front and back panels, right sides facing each other. I then gave them a good press before laying both panels on top of one another, right sides facing each other again, pockets out. I needed to sew them together along the outer edge of the pocket and along the side seam. I also gauged how much opening this pocket needed and closed up the excess to ward off the potential pickpocket. I then made a ton of bias tape. I used some to hide the raw edges around the pocket openings. I also trimmed the seam allowances around the pockets, which I also finished with the bias binding. The skirt's side seam allowances also needed finishing, which I did by felling them by machine. The skirt needed to be gathered to fit to the bodice. I did that by sections, matching the side seams, the center back and the center fronts, and sewing two rows of running stitches on each section and pulling on those threads to create even gathers. I made sure they were evenly spaced using a lot of pins and sewed them by hand at the waistline using one back stitch per pleat. I went over each section with the machine, skipping over the pockets, which I then sewed towards the center front with a slightly smaller seam allowance. Securing the pocket to the waistline ensures it won't sag down and bring your design down with it. There wasn't a lot left to do at this point. I went over my waistline with a piece of 1 inch cotton twill tape to hide all the raw edges. I could then pin the outer layer of the yoke in place on the edge that had been previously folded and hand stitch it in place using whip stitches. Once this whole edge was secured, I folded the remaining seam allowances inwards to match the interfacings, pinned them in place and again sewed them by hand. The only thing left to do at that point were to add buttons, buttonholes and a few hooks and eyes to finish the bottom edge of the skirt, which I did by machine because I was in a rush, and finally to remove the visible temporary basting stitches. And the garment was done! <laughs> Ok, 
Okay, I have a few final words about this project before I slip it on and show it to you on me. Well, first of all, it looks way better in person than it does on picture on video. I'm very sorry. I think you have to be there in order to fully appreciate the beautiful buttons that I used on this project. I know the camera sees it, but you gotta be there, I think. Second of all, making this dress was way harder than I expected. I am what I would call a pretty advanced sewist. And I did have some technical difficulties. I guess I would rate this pattern as an intermediate, at least. You need to have to pause and think a little bit about this one. You have to wrap your head around it. When I did wrap my head around it, this pattern held no secrets for me anymore. And the results are there to back it up. <laughs> and I also made a cutting mistake when uh, cutting my pattern pieces, you know, with the back neck piece, the one I made was way too small for some reason. I don't know, I've been sewing intensively for a couple of years now and this is the first time that happened to me, so yay me, I guess. <laughs> I did have to install a bit more hardware than I anticipated at first. Some of these buttons are only decorative. So I've got seven pants hooks and seven buttons as well, two of which are actually purely decorative. All in all, it's maybe not my best work, but I'm still very proud of it. I am very happy. I think the dress is gorgeous and I just can't wait to go put it on. As always, I would like to thank you very, very much for watching. I wish you some very happy holidays. Take care of yourself. Life's too short to hang out with people you hate. Make sure you drink enough water, especially if you're getting a little boozy during this holiday season. I know I'll be drinking home alone because Christmas is cancelled again. And uh, I guess I'll see you next year. Bye! Thank you.